have just merged 54 countries into what is now the largest country in the world, far ahead of Russia, which we can fit almost two times into Africa. Countries like Congo, South Africa, Nigeria and Algeria lose their status as countries and become states, just like in the United States. And the continent becomes the United States of Africa. This makes it not only one of the world's leading powers, but also one of the world's leading military powers. You will see that this merger can be very beneficial, but also very problematic for the former African countries and their inhabitants. For a start, the new country is extremely well placed at the center of the world, even if there isn't really a center, given that the earth is round, even if some don't agree. In any case, we can say that it's at the center of the map. Okay, you're going to tell me that in the United States, they have this map, so Africa isn't in the center at all, but in the eastern end, or even in China, where Africa isn't in the center at all, but in the far west, or Australia, where the... yeah, that one doesn't count. But for this video, we'll say that the country is in the center, since this map delimits the sides by cutting an ocean, and not by cutting countries in half like the planisphere used in America. And if I haven't convinced you yet, I'll explain myself. For a start, the country is linked to the Asian continent to the northeast and is very close to the European continent via the Strait of Gibraltar, which is excellent for trade. The country borders the Atlantic and Indian Oceans as well as the Mediterranean Sea, giving it a strong presence in the seas and oceans. The farthest continent from Africa is Oceania, some 6,500 kilometers away. To give you a comparison, the farthest continent from Europe is also Oceania, but this time over 10,000 kilometers away. Africa is about 2,800 kilometers kilometers from South America and around 5,000 kilometers from North America. This means that the country is right in the middle of the map. The merger of the 54 countries of the African continent into what is now called the United States of Africa increases the new country's influence, particularly in world trade. Thanks to its strategic position, the country is about to control the oceans. Yes, you heard me right. The country is going to control the oceans and to do so, it's counting on three very important points all around the country. The first is the Strait of Gibraltar, one of the world's great shipping lanes. The second is the Suez Canal, which accounts for over 10% of the world's seaborne trade and is located entirely on African soil. The third is the Cape of Good Hope, which makes Africa an almost mandatory point of passage from the Atlantic to the Indian Ocean and vice versa. But despite the merging of the 54 countries into one, Africa is still the sixth country with the highest GDP in the world, just behind the UK and almost equal to France, and a long way behind the giants of China and the USA. A new country means a new capital, and Lagos seems to be a very good one, given that it's Africa's most populated city. But if we compare this new country to the United States, it's not necessarily the most populated city that has to be the capital. In the USA, Washington is the 20th most populated city, far behind New York and Los Angeles. So why not Addis Ababa? Many of you are wondering what the heck this is all about. Before the 54 countries merged, there was the African Union, which was an organization of all African countries similar to the European Union with its headquarters in the Ethiopian city of Addis Ababa. And so, we have our new capital. Even if we found the new capital, the merger of so many countries could cause major problems starting with the different languages across the continent. And there would be over 2,000 different ones. You wouldn't believe it. Some are spoken by very few people, while others represent a large percentage. English, Arabic, French and Swahili are the most widely spoken. Other languages such as Hausa, Yoruba and Oromo follow. Africa would be the country with the most linguistic diversity in the world, which will lead it to have states that are a little more autonomous than others. After that, it's quite possible to have a functional country with citizens who speak different languages. We already have examples like Switzerland, where they speak German, French, Italian and Romansh as official languages. Or Canada, which has English and French. Belgium has French, German, Dutch and Mandarin. I'm kidding about Mandarin. And to take an even more similar example, South Africa has nine official languages. And to go even further, Papua New Guinea is said to have over 800 different languages. The fact that many Africans speak several languages can help. 70% of Africans speak two languages and 30% three languages, which is a lot. Africa is the continent with the most natural resources. On that, we agree. So just imagine the merger of 54 African countries. The United States of Africa ranks among the best. On a global scale, it is estimated 
estimate that Africa accounts for 40% of gold reserves, 30% of mineral reserves, 12% of oil reserves and many other resources. And that's just the beginning. This has always attracted the attention of the world's other countries. But now, the United States of Africa is a single state with one of the largest armies in the world. With the merger of 54 countries, it's the merger of almost as many armies so the country has a very big strike force. But then again, despite the merger of so many countries, the United States of Africa only has the 12 largest military budget with 40 billion US dollars, less than Ukraine, France or Saudi Arabia. An increase will surely be necessary given the sheer size of the country and the need to protect its vast surface area. Plus, the country is connected to another continent by 112 kilometers and on top of that, it's an African soil. But wait a minute. There's a problem here, because there are European enclaves in the country, and more specifically, Spanish enclaves. So there are literally two other land borders present in the United States of Africa in addition to the one in Egypt. But perhaps outside countries aren't the biggest threat. You just have to stay on the land. While this merger brings many positive points, it also brings many negative points. With perpetual civil war due to wealth inequalities, different languages, cultures and religions. It is the world's most populated country ahead of India and China with 1.5 billion inhabitants. On top of that, the continent is the midst of demographic boom and according to some estimates, Africa will have 4.4 billion inhabitants by 2100, representing 39% of the world's population. How can we merge 54 countries when some, like Niger, are in economic and security crisis, while others, like Gabon, are peaceful and prosperous? In any case, China would be the leading economic partner of the United States of Africa. The CAN would be a competition organized in a single country. The United States of Africa would become the world's largest trading space. But that's already been the case since 2019. Now you know what would happen if Africa was a country, but surely you'd like to know what would happen if Africa disappeared. Just click here.